I'm Sanjay Pandey, co-founder of LearnDataVault.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about why you shouldn't have a, an architecture where you go directly from the source systems to the dimensional schema, the Kimball-based architecture. And I'll give you reasons why. So you have, in, in the conformed architecture, you have shared dimensions, right? So suppose you have a that's that's one of the dimensions you have. It's the first fact you build. So there's just one fact right now. And there's a few other dimensions. And that's a typical, we're just taking it simplistic right now. But that's a typical um, star schema. So you have your fact, you have your dimensions. And this one's conformed, and say it's a probably a slowly changing dimension type two, uh, where you're maintaining history. Now, suppose you have maintenance, and you have to add three columns to your slowly changing dimension. You immediately change, potentially change the grain of this table, and you have to make sure that these new fields that are coming in are tested properly, but because you changed, because you touched this, the impact will force you to test the fact and this model. If you go into um, uh, a new projects where you're adding new facts into, so suppose I have another fact and this dimension conforms this fact and say this it conforms and say there's a new dimension you bring in now the problem is it's 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 in 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 many of these instances it is cheaper to recreate the whole thing because the the cascaded testing impact that you have across the model is going to force you to test uh, for example, suppose this fact is brought in because you brought in a new system and that forces you to bring in some more data in here. You Just this uh, new model is going to impact this entire model and the cascading impact forces a lot of testing time. And if you get it wrong, it messes up the existing models. That's not good. So what I recommend and it is to have is to take this architecture which is good for the front end because the business is very comfortable with something like this and put a really a structured data warehouse um, people would argue that you know we have a buffer we have a staging area but that's not enough because staging area that's just landing it that doesn't help with the logic that just helps l get the data out of the source system so I'm going to just divide it into, let's divide this into two parts, where from the source, you're coming to a data warehouse, and the star schemas are, say, in the data mark. And the data, we have a staging area still, so uh, that's optional. If it's real time, there won't be a staging area. Now, the data warehouse, I highly recommend using a data vault model and the methodology, the data vault architecture, basically. So. There are multiple advantages of that, and we'll get into wa various advantages of the methodology, but let's just talk about the data model for now. So the data vault is built up of uh, hubs, which are basically just a collection of business keys. So a hub would be your business keys across your entire organization, across your systems for a certain type of thing. And the descriptive data, it is brought in in satellites and it's split by rate of change it's split by type of data uh, and then all transactions are bought brought into links so between a link you'll have two hub tables and links may have their own description and effectivity dates and so they'll have link satellites as well the advantage of this model is if you get new data in Suppose there's new data, the new descriptive data for this hub. Suppose you have a new system that has uh, val uh, values that belong in this. It has business keys that are across the enterprise, and it does belong here. 
you can add that new data into the hub because the hub is always insert only and you can bring in new satellites from that new data without touching the existing model so the, there'll be new there'll be insert only new data here and there'll be new data in the in this new satellite it, you don't have to touch any of the existing data integration or ETL code in the data warehouse. And that's very powerful because the only testing you have to do is just make sure that this insert only, it's getting the right keys, and all the testing is just focused on this. It does not touch anything in the existing model. If you bring in a brand new system and it has to bring in a whole bunch of data that has to be connected back into the data warehouse, you can do so with link tables. So suppose you have other uh, hubs and um, an entire data model. You can use links to link the, this data model into the new data model that you brought in. Even so, to the point where if you have two data warehouses built as a data vault, it's completely different companies if they merge. All you have to do is just build links between the two data warehouses and you have a your data warehouse is done. There's no need to test anything but any of the just the new structures like the links and everything is tested and running. It might be a little more complex than that, but we'll talk about that in in another video. Now from here, let's go to the data mart. So the hubs and its satellites. This loosely defines a, it looks very much like a dimension in a star schema. The links and its satellites, these look very much like a fact. And again, other hubs, they'll make more dimensions. From the data vault, because you have a pattern-based architecture, this, these facts and dimensions, they have no business rules. They ha they're raw facts and dimensions. But even these can be generated. All this code is pattern-based. It's strict pattern-based code. So it's heavily encouraged to actually generate the code because you have, in a data vault, you have only have three types of objects, the hubs, links, and satellites, and that's it. And they have fixed uh, structures that there's only one way to do them. And because of that, all the data integration code can be generated. You don't need to actually handwrite the code. Even if you handwrite the code, it's actually quite fast. Because all of this is pattern-based and is so strict, it's also very easy to generate these raw star schemas. And then this creates really good input, and, and it make, helps you be really al agile. Because if you have new data coming in, you ha it, it reduces the impact. Because this is integrated by hubs and links, you have a reduction in complexity because you've already done pre-integration. You don't need to integrate. Um, suppose this dimension really comprises of many sources. You don't need to do that integration again because you've done that at the hub level. So what will happen here is you'll have the hub that's built from those five sources, and you'll perhaps have these satellites. And when you combine jo and join them, you create this dimension. So it is much, much easier because you're breaking the code down into smaller pieces. Um, so that's why I really strongly recommend having a data vault, data warehouse, and your data mart. Now, another advantage is because you have all the history in the data warehouse, your data mart doesn't have to be a, a full EDW. So you can bring in um, things that are normally not considered best practices. For example, aggregated facts. You can bring in, uh, you can avoid slowly changing dimensions. You can do a type 2 if you want to. You can not do a type 2 if you want to. You have choices. You can even truncate load data sets. You don't need to track. You don't need to do any kind of change tracking here because it's already done here in the satellites. Uh, and, and that's why it really reduces the complexity. And you can focus on delivering this to the business really fast. If the business comes back, with more business rules, because there's no business rules applied here, business rules or changes, the raw data is still the same. It's still coming from the same source system. So it doesn't make sense for you to go back and reload. Uh, if they change the business rules, just apply the rules and regenerate the data. And you'll be good to go.